Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudobuyo playing vanilla Minecraft 15W39C of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC edition. And um, I'm, in this video I'm going to showcase a new item elevator design. Uh, this, um, uh, most of my item elevator designs so far have been geared towards adapting uh, what I already have, uh, which is the classic fence post elevator by um, uh, test 131729. Um, those no longer work, and so I've been working on ways to uh, to fix the things that uh, will have broken. Uh, and that's why a lot of my designs have these bends in them. Uh, it, that's because they were required in the old item elevator design. Uh, this specific item elevator, for example, it doesn't actually rely on the bend. You, you wouldn't need this. It could be completely straight. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, so I, I decided then to see what what kinds of designs could I come up with uh, if I was designing something from scratch given the new mechanics. Uh, so I started tinkering around with ways for getting items actually into the glass tower here. Uh, and so I came up with this, which is a water channel that actually uh, comes down the side of the uh, uh, of the glass tower here, and the items then get pushed into the middle by a piston. Uh, so the, it's not flowing water that's actually getting them into the middle. Uh, it's a piston pushing them in from the side. Uh, now, this is not uh, is an unregulated item stream, uh, and uh, I can get away with that because this piston, when it pushes items that are in this block into the cobblestone wall, any additional items that come down here just bump up against that block being pushed by the piston and wait for the next piston extension. Uh, so I don't have to regulate the uh, uh, the input stream at all. Uh, uh, this piston then just runs on a clock. Uh, here's just a, a standard torch repeater loop, a 34 tick clock, uh, 17 ticks on, 17 ticks off. Uh, and uh, this actually works pretty well. Um, I, it, uh, it does rely on what I consider to be wonky behavior for the collision box of cobblestone walls. Uh, they're not consistent with fences, and there's a little bit of strangeness uh, with respect to uh, what happens when uh, uh, when they when cobblestone walls connect with other blocks. Uh, but um, I'm going to make use of that at least for the time being uh, um, to uh, see what I can get away with here. Uh, but this design actually does work pretty well. I have about a two percent loss ratio uh, with this uh, with this design. Um, uh, that translates into one in about every ten extensions of this piston loses an item. So, not not too bad. That would be okay for some farms. Uh, but uh, I wanted to see if there was any way that I could do better than that. Uh, and if you see, there's a little bit of a space in between the water stream and the cobblestone wall. Now, items that come down the water stream don't actually move into the space uh, where the cobblestone wall is because of the uh, because of the water flow. It just kind of bumps them up against the uh, bumps them up against this block here. Um, so I thought if there was a way that I could get the items to move in towards that cobblestone wall in the space that's between the water and the cobblestone wall, that might improve the uh, uh, the efficiency of this design. Uh, I might have less loss. Now, the way in which to do that is to actually change the water flow of this uh, stream here so that the water is flowing diagonally towards this cobblestone wall. Uh, in order for that to happen, I have to have water that's right here flowing in this direction. Uh, and uh, in order for that to happen, I have to have this block moved over where the piston is, uh, which means that the block is now two blocks away from the cobblestone wall. So I'm going to need a piston double extender. I'm also going to need to move this water stream over by one block uh, because if it's right here, uh, what's going to happen is water is going to flow into this corner uh, rather than that corner over there. So I'm going to need to move the water stream and add a double extender. And that is what I did. Uh, so that's uh, this design over here. Uh, the water stream has been moved over by one and you can see now the water flowing into the corner next to the cobblestone wall. And I've got a, a, a double extender over here. Uh, now this actually worked surprisingly well, so well I decided to test it under heavier loads. Uh, so this here is a two minute test uh, to simulate an item stream of 90,000 items per hour. So I'm going to go ahead and start this uh, and uh, start my pistons over here. 
And, uh, and now let me finish explaining what's going on here. So uh, we can see items coming in really heavy uh, into this water stream. And for the most part, they're going over into the corner. When the double, uh, when the double extender extends, uh, items that are against the cobblestone wall go up. And incoming items uh, end up getting trapped uh, over here, waiting for the uh, double extender to retract. Uh, it does seem as though some items are glitching out here. You may have noticed a couple of items uh, that appear to have been flying upward really, really fast. Uh, those are just visual glitches. They, they, um, the, the items still are actually going up uh, like normal. I'm not quite sure why those visual glitches are occurring, uh, but uh, we'll take a look at um, uh, we'll take a look at what items uh, are missing. See, it looked like a, 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 a gold ingot. Uh, just flew off the top there. But uh, we'll take a look and see what items are actually missing at the end. Uh, I do need to empty this periodically because it's so many items they don't all fit in my inventory. So I'm going to take items over there and I'm just going to manually dump them into this chest. Um, over uh, in the uh, uh, in that um, uh, that collection of droppers there, I've got five droppers with uh, nine different kind, uh, nine stacks of nine different kinds of items. Uh, so uh, I, if I add everything into this chest, uh, I've already got six of each item here, uh, which means that if I add everything that came from the droppers uh, down at the bottom, I should see six items of of each of these types. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and grab what's here, uh, just to make sure I, can, uh, I don't fill up my inventory and I'll get the rest uh, after explaining stuff here. There we go. Okay, so I'll, I'll get the rest in a little bit. Uh, now, this double extender is just a standard flat double extender. There's nothing special about it. Uh, and over here, this is just a standard 34 tick clock. 17 ticks on, 17 ticks off. Uh, you want the periods of these clocks to be small, especially with really heavy item streams, because if the period is long and it's a long time between pushes of the piston, uh, then a, a significant number of items will accumulate there. Uh, that does not matter for pushing items up. Uh, however, it does matter for attempting to collect them at the top, uh, and so you want the periods to be relatively small. This clock could actually be reduced to be a 22 tick clock, 11 ticks on, 11 ticks off, uh, but that's the lowest you can go. If you go lower than that, say 10 ticks on, 10 ticks off, there begins to be some weirdness with respect to the double extender and the uh, updates to the water blocks here, uh, and items start getting yanked out of the stream. So. Um, 11 ticks on, 11 ticks off is the lowest you can go. I would recommend going uh, at least a couple of ticks above that, say 13 ticks on, 13 ticks off. This one is 17 ticks on, 17 ticks off, so I've got a good margin for error. Uh, but other than that, there's there's nothing else special. You know, There's nothing down here, there's no regulators. Um, it does run on a clock, um, which means that it's constantly running. Uh, but uh, if you've got you know something like a guardian farm, that's probably not too much of an issue. <laughs> uh, um, so this actually it just does work surprisingly well, given uh, the, its simplicity. Uh, the, the interesting bit is really just in the mechanics here, especially with respect to this water flow. Uh, making sure that uh, water is flowing into the corner and, and it's got an appropriate flow both when the pistons are extended and when they're retracted. Uh, it looks like all the items have been ejected from the droppers here, so I'm going to go ahead and, and grab the rest up in my collection area. And uh, let's add it to this chest and see how many things are missing. And look at that, we've got six items all the way across in the bottom. Absolutely everything that was in those droppers uh, made it up, so, that, so it was completely lossless. It's not always completely lossless every once in a while. There's a missing item or two, uh, and uh, certainly I've found items uh, on the ground here when I've uh, reloaded the chunks. Uh, as uh, as a test, but um, it re operates really well under really heavy loads, and and it's actually quite simple. Just like I said, a standard double extender and a 34 tick clock. Uh, nothing else special about this at all. Uh, uh, again, a word of caution, I am relying on what I consider to be wonky behavior for the collision box of uh, cobblestone walls. 
And I do not have, uh, at least at this point, uh, a fix for this if that changes. So uh, if you did build something like this and then in, an, in another snapshot um, uh, the collision box of cobblestone walls changes, um, <laughs> this would no longer operate and, and I really wouldn't know how to fix it. So uh, just a word of warning there. But uh, until then, it, it does work extremely well. Uh, it was... Um, uh, this will work under very, very heavy loads, uh, and so I, I think this is probably the simplest uh, design for a high volume item stream that I've come up with so far. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that the uh, behavior of cobblestone walls doesn't change for the official 1.9 release. But uh, I think that's it then for this video. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, please leave a note in the comments, and uh, thanks for watching.